I thank, first of all, I applaud the question because the key word is compromise. Let me go back to the Cuban Missile Crisis, 1962. Two totally independent leaders, Nikita Khrushchev oh, and Fidel Castro, decide that it would be a good idea for Russia to deploy missiles on Cuban soil. Did they have the right to make that decision? Absolutely. Two independent countries. So they make that agreement. And the Soviets begin bringing in the, the missiles, well, the parts to assemble them. And the United States discovers this. Kennedy says to the Russians, turn your ships around or we will sink them. And if that leads to World War III, so be it. And the Russians turned their ships around. But there was a compromise. Not made public in this country at that time. Kennedy agreed to pull out American missiles that were deployed in Turkey in exchange. Because the Russians said, look, you have missiles in Turkey right on our border almost. You say our missiles are an existential threat? Well, so are yours. Take them out, and we will not deploy ours. That was a compromise. Now, Kennedy asked that this not be made public because it would kind of be seen as a, a loss of face and blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't made public, and then it was later right on. So that was a compromise. And it, it helped avoid World War III. The Russian leadership sees NATO as an existential threat. Rightly or wrongly, that's not the point. The point is that that's the way it's seen. And this is not politics. You know, why would you bring NATO closer and closer to our borders, they say. In Latvia, it's on the border. In Estonia, it's on the border. Now, Ukraine is, being, is moving westward. It's a complicated issue. The United States has played a certain role in this. That's not the point. It's moving westward. If it ultimately goes into the western fold, or whatever you want to call it, then it's logical to surmise that Ukraine will join the European Union and will become a NATO member. Now, Ukraine has a border with Russia. Not only that, but Crimea, which was traditionally Russian, Sevastopol was always the base of the Navy, the Russian Navy, um, naval fleet of the Black Sea. So if Crimea remains Ukrainian, and if Ukraine becomes part of NATO, the Russian fleet won't be in. Sevastopol, but the, the American Sixth Fleet might very well be there. And NATO will be on Russia's southwest border. And the Russians see this as an existential danger. And they say, we will not permit it. Now, does that correspond to international law? No, it doesn't. But when you talk about existential threat, you say, I don't care about international law as in the Cuban Missile Crisis. You say, no, we don't give a damn how you feel. We're not going to allow this. It is my opinion that had from the very outset um, been some kind of internationally um, negotiated agreement that Ukraine would not become a member of NATO for at least the next 50 years, there would be no Ukrainian problem. 